Hey, hey, I'm live. I'm wondering whether this microphone's picking up my voice or whether it's the crappy built-in microphone because the crappy built-in camera just kicked in instead of my better webcam that I have attached to the top of the to the top of the computer. So I don't know how clear my voice is coming through. Um, hopefully it's okay. Um, I have one viewer at the moment, although it says zero viewers. I know Rez is watching. Rez, do you want to come on the air? Very late your time, though. I don't want to keep you up all night. Um, <clears throat> oh, good. I sound okay. Okay, cool. I don't know if it's coming through this microphone. I kind of look at the microphone as I'm talking. Um, all About Comics is here. Rez is here. Um, so I thought I would, I just felt like staying up. Um, so I'm going to send Rez a, um, an invite. Let's see. I'm going to send it to you through Twitter, Rez. Um, let's see. You can just stay on as long as you want or leave when you want and when you get too sleepy. Um, so let's see if that works. I just sent you a link through. Wait, was that the right link? Is that a clickable link? It doesn't look right. Share the permanent link bookmark. Here, maybe I gotta invite you this way. Things keep changing with the way this works. <laughs> okay, so I'm here basically. Hey, the Masked Panther. Um, there you are. You're up late too, I think, Mr. Panther, because I think you're uh, on the East Coast, as is Res. Um, so it must be like two o'clock your time, two thirty. So I'm just going to do a bit of a haul here and chat um, whenever it comes up. I don't know if I succeeded in sending REST a usable link. It's weird. Um, I'm going to try that one more time. I think, I, I think that might be the right link. There. Now at REST, I think I've sent you the right link. Um, yeah, it's 2.30 Mass Panther time. Thomas Churchill. Hey, Thomas. So I'm just, I was just up. I'd been, uh, Matt, uh, Wednesday Serial and I tried to record a podcast. I don't, and I'll try mixing the sound tomorrow with the help of my wife, who actually knows what she's doing on such things. Um, so, uh, I just was kind of revved up and I wanted to do some more chatting about comics. And I have a ton of things that I bought in the past few weeks that I haven't, I don't think I've shown online. Just today I got um, House of Secrets Omnibus Volume 1 from the Bronze Age uh, from In Stock Trades. I've, I've been going... Okay, Res, I put another link. The first link I put in for you on Twitter was wrong, but now there should be a link you should be able to click on in the Twitter uh, direct messages um, to come on. If anyone else wants to try and come on, let me know. If you're on Twitter, I could send you a link. Are you on Twitter, Mass Panther? I think you are, but maybe not very active there. I don't know if you want to come live at 2.30 in the morning anyway. So... I, I'm a little puzzled because it's House of Secrets Bronze Age, but didn't the House of Secrets start in the Silver Age? Um, but I'm kind of just lusting after all these um, all these omnibuses from from yesteryear, and my rationale for buying them much quicker than I can read them is maybe they'll go out of print, and so now I have them. Uh, Let's see. Any luck with the second link I sent you on Twitter, Res? So just remove the plastic from this House of Secrets. 
Um, I know Mass Panther's been collecting uh, omnibuses, I think maybe Marvel ones uh, that you've been getting off of eBay, but I get these off of in-stock trades. Um, I make one order and then I get an extra 2% off, so it usually ends up being either 52% off or 44% off. The discounts are pretty amazing. There's no, usually with these omnibuses, yeah, there's no picture there or anything. I, I love it when there is the picture on the on the real hardcover. Um, let's see what's what this is about. It looks like it starts with House of Secrets eighty one. Maybe that's when they started it as a horror. Or I don't know. I'll have to look at the introduction and see how they define it. The introductions by Dan DiDio. I don't see introductions by him that often. Um, looks nice on this glossy paper. I'm also collecting lots of House of Secrets in the the original. Whenever I can find them cheap, I get readers' copies of House of Secrets and House of Mystery. Um, for a second, I thought that was Steve Ditko. But I don't think it's not Steve Ditko. Mary, maybe Jerry Garadetti or I don't see the credit. So I I love a good short story. Sometimes these are good short stories. I love horror short stories. Horror seems particularly cool in the short story mode. Um, and these are also famous for their great covers, which have a lot of superstar artists doing the covers. Uh, Neil Adams, I think that's is that Neil Adams, and Bernie Wrightston, and Mike Kaluda. Mass Panther says the most recent um, omnibus he acquired was the Amazing Spider-Man Volume One. Um, oh. Great memory. Oh, there's Russ. Hey, Russ. Hey, how are you? Um, <laughs> I, I look dead. <laughs> you look better than me. That's for sure. <laughs> Sorry, I could I couldn't sleep. <laughs> so you get to be my my Ed McMahon or something to my hall. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I have my, I have a little bit I, of coffee. <laughs> you're still kind of off of buying comics for now in the physical format. Yeah, yeah. So what did you get? So I'm pretty excited over this. Um, oh, I called it House of the you know, House of Secrets. So there was the House of Mystery, House of Secrets. I was, I've been, I was collecting horror house. anthology comics of the Bronze Age, and I thought of the Silver Age, but these are the Bronze Age ones. I was collecting um, the newer ones from, Vert uh, from Vertigo, uh, the old. The, um, Vertigo had revived the series and did it in a very different way sometime in the early 2000s, I think. Mm -hmm. I had those, and I had the omnibus. I double dipped in the singles. They had an omnibus of that, too. Uh-huh, I have it downstairs. Great, creepy covers. Um, I get my omnibus and kind of famous going for their covers, these old old ones. Um, didn't the the uh, modern House of Mystery or House of Secrets? It had kind of an ongoing plot plus plus short stories built into it or something. Let me get my, my omnibus and show it off so you can compare it. Sure, if you, if it's uh, handy. Yeah, I'll go get it real quick. I'll move on to the next thing I got. Um, uh, another another weightlifting. I got the um, annotated Watchmen. Um, yeah, Gene Paul Ace Peter, you're here. Um, oh, 81 is where the horror star starts. Um, that's good to know. So that's why they started at that issue. And yeah, the covers by Bernie Rice and Michael Kaluta and uh, and um, also Neil Adams on that one are on the on those comics are really great. So this one, whoa, it's hard to even hold up. Uh, it's black, a black and white version of Watchmen with these notes along the side. I think I'm gonna take the dust jacket off because I'm afraid I'm gonna hurt it. Hey, good night, Mass Panther. Um, I guess, Sean, you must, must be even later your time, right? Are you even earlier than regular East Coast time? Oh, go ahead, Rez. You got to talk, so you'll be the one. Okay, <laughs> so um, here is the omnibus of it. So this is oh, the House of Secrets from the modern era. Yeah, from the modern era. From it has Stephen uh, T. Siegel 
and Teddy Christensen. This is the cover. And um, it has, well, it's pretty thick. It was, let's see, the year, and it was, um, I think it was 2000s, as you say, right? It doesn't say immediately. Was it the early 2000s? I, I'm not sure. I think I may have it confused with the House of Mystery. Which no, 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 19, 1996. Oh, okay. So yeah. I totally missed that one. I Yeah, yes, yeah, 96 to, to 98. But uh, here's some of the art in it. It's pretty, pretty good art. Uh, I, I like the art a lot. I don't know if it's showing pretty well. But um, I definitely um, reminisce of that old um, 90s. So when you said you double dipped on this one, you got it both in singles and? And yes, yeah, singles and this uh, hardcover. Oh. Yeah, and you have some black and white with a little bit of red sprinkled throughout. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So you you were getting singles back way back then in the ninety early uh, late nineties. I mean, uh, no, I, I just got some back. I I was getting it. I got this. Um, I had got back issues of this um, in the two in the two thousands. But um, I see. yeah, I didn't get this when it came out. But I got it um, a little bit later on, like a few years after it came out. So when it came, like a few years after it was um it was out already. So now yeah, when it came out, Paul, they, I keep calling you Jean Paul, but as Sean, um, <laughs> I read the the reboot of the House of Mystery. I remember really liking that. I don't know if I finished it though. I was getting it in individual issues, yeah. and I think I uh, something happened work wise, and I didn't go to the comic book shops for a while at some point. But um, I need to catch up on the rest of that. Yeah, probably right around that time. I was probably more into um. Probably more into manga, maybe. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Undead probably Quinn has the ghost one shot and says it's pretty good. I was, so I was just also one. showing this um, annotated Watchman. It has I, that's kind of cool. There. It's beautiful. A Rorschach. <laughs> and what bothers me about it a little bit is there's some pages where there's no annotations. Oh yeah. So um, some of it has some annotations, but I thought it would be a lot more annotated than it is because there's probably so much on every page of a Watchmen issue. You think, you think the pages that have no annotations they will make the um, the pages more spread out and big the panels bigger to give you uh, more, you know? Well, that's for the thing. book, if they spread it out, it would just distort the panels actually. Yeah. I, I, anyway, I'm still excited to have it. I guess it's kind of a cool, unusual volume. There's no I way think to they've magnify. done a similar thing with the Sandman books, but I don't think I'll get those. There's no way to magnify it without without distorting it. You think? Sorry. There's no way to magnify it without distorting the art. Well, it's a matter of proportions, right? So the page is not proportionate to if they expanded the art, they'd have to stretch it one way, but not the other. Um, given the size of the pages. Mm -hmm. And then I have this, which I haven't unwrapped yet. Have you gotten uh, Inside I, Mobius, I, volume I, one? Uh, well, you know, you already know I have I have that already. I have it in the, in the- um, oh, you have it in the original language? Yeah, I have the original language. <laughs> I have the original volumes. <laughs> and then my... German, but do you read French or do you just look at the art? Well, I, I, I read, I read it in the original language first. Yeah, so I've read them already, but I, I, I do tend on getting that. I do tend on getting it in English. So I have I have never seen this before. Um, I tagged you. I tagged you. Maybe this is the first time it's happened. Come out in English. I'm not sure. It is actually. It's the first time it's actually come out in English. But I, uh, I do intend on getting it. That's an intense front piece. <laughs> it says you make me, me want to grab it. They all look identical. But it's like three volumes. So, is it a continuous story or a lot of short things? Yeah, they're like little, little, little uh, different stories. But they all contain like little stories. Uh huh. So it looks like it has some process stuff in it too. These sketches. But I imagine they all translate differently too. I mean, because you know. Was it about this size, do you think? I'm no, they're to... actually 
smaller. The ones I have is like this size. Here's the size of a comic book. The ones I have is this size. They're like literally the comments, small. They're talking about uh, mutants, I think. You, I, I need to get the one you have because that's huge compared uh -huh. to what I have. It's way huger. It seems a, a little more cartoony than his average work that I'm used to. It is. Um, it is. But he has so many different styles. Indeed. And uh, uh, Jean Paul Ace Peter says Gerard, Gerard is one of the most amazing artists in history. That's Mobius's real name, Jean Gerard, or however you pronounce that. Oh, close your eyes, naked woman. <laughs> so I wonder if this is, is Blueberry show up in it? So different characters from different strips, I think, probably show yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. All his characters from all his works show up in the in this actual all his um um from all his works show up in the in this inside Mobius, actually. It's very sketchy and loose here. Anyway, that's uh that's only the beginning of all the junk I've gotten. I don't see how they're going to fit all of all the inside Mobius in that one tome. It is. It is I don't, there's, I don't, there's, that's volume one. So I think there's at least two volumes, maybe three volumes. So it's the well, I have three, you have a lot fatter. I have three tomes. So I don't see how they're going to fit three within that small. Because it look like that looks. What I have is three fat little tomes. So and what you have is like a skinny one tome so it has to be but, yeah but it's only volume one so i don't know how many volumes they'll do well i imagine there but at least more than one yeah there should be two more to follow i imagine and then I, I i've been collecting these rook hardcovers um this is volume three it has a black and white richard corbin cover on it which is surprising Love i don't richard. think the interior art's richard corbin at all rook was a character from the old warren comics and they did a a year or two ago. They did a black dark horse did a um, a sequel to it. But so this is all nice oversized black black and white artwork. I've been collecting anything else by Richard Corbin as of late. Not since he finished his last comic book. <laughs> when Rack, he, not red uh, not red gods, but is it? Um, uh, something of the grave. Yeah, uh, yeah. That I kind of fell off of that uh, that the anthology of sorts. Um, that he was doing a one man show kind of thing. What was it? Uh -huh. The uh, the short stories. I, it kind of grew on me at first. I didn't like it, and then it grew on me. I liked it, but I just kind of fell off of it a little bit. But it's too. It's. I mean, I like his black and white, but it's too bad it wasn't in color because I like that even more. Oh, the the, the, the whole color the situation didn't didn't bother me at all. I just I just kind of fell off of it because I was stopped collecting physical comics. Oh, 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 it was when you stopped collecting. Yeah, yeah. So that 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 was the only reason why I, I fell off. I didn't I didn't fall off for any other particular reason other than just I stopped collecting physical comics. So. Um, Sorry, I keep moving on to the next book. This is the collected Night Force from Gene Colan and Marv Wolfman. Um, I wonder what the binding is like. Since it's a DC book, I'm immediately worried. And it looks, it, looks it does look like wrong. glued binding. I don't know. Glued, glued binding in a hard cover is really kind of sacrilegious. Look, you moved it, okay. And then yeah, you get, you know, red. Got her loss. Although since it's a book done back when they didn't do double page spreads, it's not too bad, but you kind of have to pull on it to get all the way to the edge of the page. Otherwise, it's kind of a nice feeling book. The, the material of the cover and everything's really nice. I don't think this, I mean, all of this was with an in-stock trades discount, but I don't think this was such a, in it, yeah, this was list price forty dollars, so they really should have done a sewn binding. There should be a place in book publishing hell for people who skimp on the binding. But still, I'm really glad to have that. I have all these comics in in 
comic book form and I just wanted a, a version where the you know the blurriness of the old cheap paper isn't isn't there so I can enjoy the art on that level. Is Gene Colan an artist you're familiar with? Gene Colan? Gene Colan? No, I can't say that. I can't say. He was a uh, bronze and silver age Marvel artist. He was on a very long run of Tomb of Dracula mm. and all kinds of other things. And then I got uh, Renato Jones, Freelancer, season two. I, I got season seeing. one in single issues, and somehow my uh, lo local comic book shop failed to get me season two. And rather than struggle with them to get get hunt down the issues, I just went ahead, waited for the trade. I kind keep saying nice trade with you can kind of see how these letters are embossed inside of it. And this is the ultimate SJW book. It's where a guy goes and hunts down and kills members of the one percent, the evil rich. I hear it's insane. It's very um, Frank Miller inspired, I would say. Okay. Yeah, art wise. Yeah. It is kind of an insane plot. It's very cool art, very cool graphically. I don't agree. I don't agree with the politics. If if he takes the politics seriously, I don't think you should kill the rich. But um, <laughs> still a fun book. <laughs> you know, so you'll agree with that. I <laughs> bet you. <laughs> Leave some of the rich, but no. <laughs> uh, I think it's. I think the politicians. Some of the rich are a problem, but it's more the politicians. I mean, like, do I want to kill um, uh, Bill Gates? I mean, he's trying to cure disease around the world. Yeah. And uh, what's the Berkshire Hathaway guy, the famous investor, Warren Buffett? He's going to leave all his money to charity. So. Why should I kill? Well, if I kill him, the money will go to charity quicker, I suppose. <laughs> Very true. It's windy, it's windy. And I got this um, book from the 70s called Weird Heroes, a American pulp. And it says, it advertises, this is a Jim Starenko cover, and it advertises itself as um, stories and graphics. And it, the graphics are by... Uh, popular comic book artists of the day, Starenko, Neil Adams, Ralph Reese, um, Esteban Morato. But I think all it really is is that it's comic book artists provide one illustration per story. So I was a bit disappointed. I thought it, I thought they might have like a mix of prose and um, and sequential art or something like that. Um, so Undead Quinn says Night Force is want on his want list. Binding for 60 going to be maybe. Uh, I'm not sure what he means by maybe you have to pay $60 before you get good binding. Uh, Gene Paul Ace Peter says Colin was legendary, known for his work on Daredevil. Exactly. Wonderful work on Daredevil. Tomb of Dracula. He had a good run on Captain America. Camp and he did Howard the Duck. The master of curve, combining innovative superhero art with a cartoon cartoon feel to his pieces. I always thought of him as kind of a master of shadowy, sinewy kind of artwork. Going along with your calling him the master of the curve, um, but and and he's a personal favorite of Gene's, also of Gene of Sean's, and uh, per, he's a personal favorite of mine from that era. Um, so yeah, if you ever get a chance to grab comics drawn by Gene Cullen, do it. There's the Jim Starenko drawing of a cowboy. So I don't know. It seems like they could have done something more with this. There's a Neil Adams illustration. But the idea was kind of a return to pulpy fun, I guess, in the 70s, in this Weird Heroes. I think it was a series of anthologies. This is, this is volume two. Like I said, this is a pretty random haul. So you think there's more for the volume? Maybe Gene Pauly's Peter will know something about this. I've only heard rumors of this comic before. It's from the Silver Age. I don't think it lasted too long. It's called The Inferior Five. 
So I think it's about a group of loser superheroes. It's from the Go-Go, well, at least this one has the Go-Go checks on it. Um, so I met, I just stumbled across um, issue number two and issue number seven, and it was the first time I've, I've seen them in the flesh, so I just grabbed them. They weren't too expensive. I'm going to look on the inside. So I'm not totally some all about comics says Warren lives real close to me. I'm not sure what Warren. I lost track of the conversation. Um, and Jean Paul Ace Peter says is a very bizarre title. So I'm not sure what they were thinking. Maybe they thought, you know, in the groovy 60s that somehow the inferior five appealed to the sense of humor of the day. Um, Merry Man is one of them. Uh, White Feather. Dumb Bunny is the name of the female character. The Blimp and Awkward Man. So that's what they look like. Who's the artist here? It looks like familiar art. Art by Sikowski and Esposito. Oh, I actually wouldn't have guessed that was Mike Sikowski right away. How new is this comic? How new? I, 1960 something. Oh, okay. 1967. Oh, this is older. 1967. Oh. So it's one of those DC oddities. They just tried oh. strange things every now and then. Oh. Um, I know there's like one of those. I'll have to read them and tell you guys about them more. You know, it's like oh, old time. Uh, like Gene Paul says they were taking a jab at Marvel. You know, that might be Gene Paul because I've read about how they couldn't believe that Marvel wrote about these loser sad sack characters like Spider Man and people actually liked them. Um, you know, rather than heroes who were always right and always knew what they were doing, like Superman of the Silver Age. I thought it was like an old, old time comic story when they when the fan graphics were like old time comics. That's what I thought it was for a minute moment there. Kind oh of thing. yeah, it would be it would be right up their alley, the all time comic. Yeah, story. that's what I thought it was kind of, but I didn't know it was that that much of an older comic. In fact, I wish all time comics would try to just be this silly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes all time. I mean, I like the all time comics, but they seem to take themselves a bit too seriously. Yeah. This one, issue five, is penciled by Winslow Mortimer. It actually looks quite good. I mean, the the artists are putting a lot of work into it. Um, calling your female character dumb bunny, that's quite something. Yeah. When you said that name, I was like, what? <laughs> That's why I was. That's why I asked you <laughs> how new was that well, comic. That's blonde, why. Right? So yeah. when you're don't become a blonde again. Weren't you a blonde for a while, so you don't want to do that again? <laughs> oh, oh! All about comics was talking about my Warren Buffett comment. Um, Warren Buffett lives close to All About Comics. Okay, so you should get some financial tips from him, or set up a good charity and have him donate to it. Well, so that's all. That's all I asked you earlier about. Um, when you were saying her name was Dumb Bunny, I was asking you, was was this all uh, all time comics? Because you know how they were kind of spiffing on these older comics. That's why I thought maybe right. in reference, maybe they were. This was like one of those kind of. Well, so this is this is uh, spoofing on the old time comics in an old time comic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, I'm really excited to read these. Actually, they're going to go near the top of my pile. Funny. This is and. Well, most people are familiar with Starfire from um, the Teen Titans, but there there was a DC Starfire before the Teen Titans. And I don't know if she had a boob window before Power Girl, but she had a boob window, apparently. I think she had about six or seven issues. This is issue number one. I think I have issue number one and, and maybe number two. So I should try reading these now. She was like a outer space sword and sorcery character. So I don't know, uh, pardon me, the, I should, the art's by Mike Vos, Vosberg, who's not an artist I usually like, but it actually looks pretty good. DC made a lot of stabs at the sword and sorcery um, in the 70s, a lot of stabs at the sword and sorcery genre without much success commercially.
Who came from the 1984 mags? This Starfire? This is DC in 1984 was Warren, right? Or are you talking about someone else, Gene Paul? Um, anyway, so I guess I tend to collect, look for, as I search through bins of cheap comics, I look for the oddities. I got a bunch of gold key. Here's a, a weird solar man of the atom where he's, I think he's been shrunk down and multiplied and is fighting bacteria or something. And here's a character that I never really heard of before called Dagar. Tales of Sword and Sorcery, Dagar, or Dagger. <laughs> Has these really great painted covers, but then the art on the inside is pretty sketchy. I don't know if you can see that. It's a, it's weird. It always surprises me that Gold Key that obviously worked on a low budget, they had these incredible painted covers. Um, I don't know, maybe they put all their money in the painted covers. There's the Dagar arch. It's actually not bad art, but it's it somehow is um, not compelling storytelling wise or something. So it's a tale of a barbarian fighting magicians, I guess. So it's like it's supposed to be like Conan. Staying awake? Do you, do you need to go to bed? Mm -mm, I'm fine. My eyes just so. <laughs> I don't think these have numbers on the covers, so I don't know what number Dagar that was. This was actually not Dagar, but Gold Key Spotlight. I think they brought Dagar back from for one issue in Gold Key Spotlight, and then they had this. Um, the the Killer Be Killed uh, issues where they're where they're spiffing on that and sort of uh, spiffing on the Conan. Oh, they were they were spoofing on um, Conan on the black and white '70s comics. Yeah, which include. Was like Savage Sword of Conan stuff, so similar characters, but in black and white, and yeah. done in a kind of a different style. But the yeah. covers were like this. I really like this cover. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I figured they when I saw that, I figured they were spoofing on not, not only Conan, but they're probably spoofing on that as well. That's why I figured it's maybe. Probably, uh, maybe. I don't know how many people even know about Dagar. <laughs> it's kind of one of the first times I heard of it. Well, I mean, when you flash that, it just automatically popped in my head. Huh. That. It, it Gene looked Paul like it. They, the 1984 Warren Publishing had backstories of Starfire. I mean, we could always tweet tweet uh, Ed Brubaker and and and, and ask uh, him. You know. We well, I was pretty sure that he's he's yeah. spoofing all those 1970s uh, black and white magazines, but mm -hmm. um, so. So a DC character Starfire ended up in the 1984 Warren Publishing comic that comic was very sexual um there's a uh korak son of tarzan painted cover fighting a um giant spider i have a lot of edgar rice burrows and hardcover uh-huh yeah i like edgar rice Burroughs. i loved edgar rice Burroughs as a kid mm -hmm. um what's he fighting there a giant bear dog looks like part dog part bear <laughs> at the con I was at last weekend, and one of the panels, someone was suggesting that these gold key covers were uh, like they would take other paintings they had, and then like the artist would take the painting and then repaint it a bit to make it more Tarzan like. So this might have you can almost see this might have originally been a, a painting of a bear fighting something else, and then they painted in these pygmies and Tarzan fighting it and added weird ears. So you get these painted covers on the outside, and then you open them, and there's this very simple art on the inside. John, I think you know everything about comics. <laughs> Do you have any blind spots? Um, I mean, I love it that you do, or, or maybe you just like all the same things I like. More... Uh, it's hard to see him in these wrinkly covers. Here is uh, Korak fighting eels underwater. And this one's the Mighty Samson. This is a very dark kind of cover. I think the Mighty Samson lived in the future, or am I confusing him with another character? This bag is really well sealed. 
because I'm not going to try to open it right now. And here's another Mighty Samson that doesn't have a painted cover. The hardest thing with the gold key things is they don't put the numbering on the outside. So you don't know what number issue you've got. Oh man, this is beat up when I took it out of the bag. This is the first time I've taken this out of the bag. Yeah, there's there's the mighty Samson art on the inside. I think that this is the last issue of the mighty Samson for anyone who cares. <clears throat> then I got, speaking of DC 70s uh, sword and sorcery, I got Iron Wolf, which was Howard Chaikin. And Howard Chaikin art was very different in the early 1970s. That's that's Howard Chaikin art back then. I think he <laughs> wrote and drew this. A lot different. Just imagine the days when so many panels were put on every page. <laughs> Looks so cluttered. Yeah, it does look cluttered. We're used to a, a looser, um, a page that you can take in all at once with your eyes. And, and pages like this, it seems like they were just assuming you would, you would focus your eyes on one panel at a time and not kind of try to absorb the whole page. It's almost like the whole art form has evolved in a different direction. Gene Paul shouts out, Howie, are, are you a big uh, Howard Howard Chaikin fan? I don't, I don't like his art very much anymore, I'm afraid. And I often liked him when he was inked by somebody else. <laughs> Here's something called Strange Adventures from 19... Probably 1971, I'm guessing, from the price on it. Um, I don't know if this is reprints of old DC science fiction stories or whether they had new ones in there, or maybe a combination of the two. House of Mystery, this is a really cool cover. Let's see. I'm not sure who it is. It might be Neil Adams. So this would be House of Mystery from very early 70s. Another one, human sacrifice. No, they're, oh, they're sacrificing a dog. That's worse than human sacrifice. Really? Really? Is it? <laughs> I, I, I would have to disagree with you on that well, one. I'm <laughs> much more upset when dogs get hurt in stories than when people do. Well, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. I just, I just find that life <laughs> it will far supersede <laughs> the life of a dog. I mean, imagine some horror movie and and old guy like me gets killed and then a cute little puppy gets killed which is gonna make your go oh i said the old the old person i used to work in old old people's home i just i just find the life of a human <laughs> well here are some children in danger from some weird oh, alligator wow. creature that that cover is not as good as the other ones in my opinion <laughs> So that, that's House of Mystery. Here's House of Secrets. So I probably have it in my omnibus now. <laughs> oh, and here, of course, you probably worry about this a lot, you know, being attacked by a, a tribe of Africans. They're always out there killing people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I mean that totally sarcastically. Yeah, I guess, I guess according to those, uh, what, what, what year was that? This, it's a 20 center, so I'm guessing this would be 1974 or so. Yeah. 374. Yeah. It's a cool drawing. It's just yeah. the funny. different then. And so. It was probably the white colonialists killing the Africans more, more often. But. Um, and here's. Uh, I was showing you this on Twitter. I was using this as an example of why romance is it never works out well. It looks I don't like know if it's actually spent, meant to be a romantic cover. <laughs> perfect romance. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> she was. So, well, it's your typical young woman marrying an old guy, only this old guy is so old he's dead. <laughs> he's probably just, he's probably just, uh, what do you call it? Um, 
cryo sleep. He's probably just a cryo sleep. <laughs> right, right. Okay, That's probably what it is. <laughs> he's, probably, he's probably just it's probably just a sci-fi story. He's probably just in cryo sleep. He's probably just waking him up just to tell him she loves him. <laughs> just say hi, dear. Did you want did you want eggs today? Did you want to scramble? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Wednesday Cereals here, my old pal, Matt. Um, I'm sorry, Jean Paul, that I didn't follow everything that you wrote. You were talking about the coloring on something, maybe on the Whitman comics or the Golki comics, making things worse. <laughs> so I just can't follow the comments very well. Um, I'm calling you old Wednesday cereal. Now, I was calling you young. So then I found this comic that I just bought because of, it was written by Mike Barron, who's the writer of um, Nexus. So I, I have no idea what it is. It was a mini series from DC called The Butcher. Um, kind of looks like a Native American maybe. I don't know. So I have the five issues of The Butcher. I'll have to find out something about that. Looks like it might be like a Native American version of The Punisher or something. <laughs> That's my first guess. But hopefully it's something more than that because Mike Barron usually comes up with interesting and kooky twists. The lettering so. looks uh, very... Uh, Sorry? So that lettering looks, I thought the lettering looked kind of different. I like lettering. It seems kind of like the lettering of a 90s comic. Would this be the 90s? Maybe it is the 90s. Yeah. I don't know. It looked, the way you flashed it, it kind of graffiti-esque, but. Okay, then I love these covers by, this is a Gil Kane cover on a Marvel horror comic. I mean. he, does, he does great sort of dragon lizard type creatures. Um, I suspect that this is all reprints of 50s and early 60s horror, but I'm not sure. It's called Where Monsters Dwell. And as a 20 center, it's probably from 1974, 75, 73, maybe even. I'm going to look inside. All of this stuff, or almost all of the, a few of them I actually paid like $5 for, like the, the, um, what were they called? The, the losers or whatever they were. The, uh, the inferior five. I actually paid real money for, but most of these are fifty centers. Yeah, this looks like an old Jack Kirby horror comic on the inside. I just need to buy an extra house to put all the comics I get from fifty cent bins into. The monsters were covered. Just like the werewolf. Attack of the Missing Link. Hmm. If there were a woman on the cover, I'd say it's about dating, but there's no woman on the cover. <laughs> Weird Wonder Tales. You ever what get weird love? The Wonder Tale, I wonder. Yeah, you hear me? You ever get those weird love? Weird love oh, or strange was the strange love or weird love? Comics? Yeah. Yeah. I've got it picked up a few of them. Those are those um out of copyright. Golden yeah. Age comics, they reprint uh, yeah. romance comics. Yeah, they're funny. <laughs> they, they reprint them in um, hardcovers and stuff. I, um... Jean Paul's pointing out that whenever you see the, the frame on a Marvel comic like this, it was their 10th anniversary celebration. Marvel comics had been around for 10 years at that point. So maybe this is 1971 then. Um... Yeah, 1971, because Marvel technically started in 1961, August of 1961. So I think for the whole year, they did these picture frame covers on their comics. So that was a 1971 comic. I got, I, my years are on a sliding scale. <laughs> Since I can remember 20 cent comics, I like to think they happened a little more recently than they did. So this one is a bunch of ape-like creatures who are going to operate on the guy who's been operating on them in the lab. 
And it's interesting that he was apparently not wearing a shirt while he was in the lab operating on them. So he's shirtless. Or maybe they already took his shirt off to operate on him. Mandy. The apes that walk like men. You operated on us, Dr. Nagin, and now it's our turn to operate on you. Vault of Evil. I love that title, but I guess it doesn't really mean anything. That looks like a John Romita cover. Senior or junior? Senior. Okay. Junior was probably still in short pants. The womb. <laughs> he was probably he was probably in junior high school at this point. Okay. Another Vault of Evil. I'm not sure if that's a John Romita cover or not. Got some zombies on it. Zombies, zombies were a newer thing back then. Uncanny Tales from the Grave. Okay, this is what happens if you date ghosts. They try to put you back in the grave with them, I guess. You look like you're trying to go on a date with her. Right, yeah. <laughs> Maybe date rape. Looks bad. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mean to joke about that. These covers just look silly. Um, beware the power of Khan. I think that's like Genghis Khan. A giant Genghis Khan attacking a ship at sea. Yeah. Unknown tales from the grave. And then I bought these and then realized I already owned them. So this is another DC Conan attempt called Claw the Unconquered. It's actually a pretty cool comic. I think it only lasted about nine issues. I think Claw had amnesia and was trying to find out where he came from and what his powers, why he had this weird hand. His, I think his hand might have been a little evil or something. And I got some Arak, Son of Thunder, which was a... Uh, have you ever heard of Arak? You probably haven't heard of him either. He's very 1970s sword and sorcery from DC. He was a, a American Indian who um, ended up living in Europe during the Middle Ages and fighting all these um, historic and made up characters. This uh, woman was kind of like Joan of Arc, although I don't think she was Joan of Arc, um, but she was one of his companions, Valda. That was her name, Valda. Huh. Oh, here's some more Arak. from Valhalla of Valkyrie. So it was kind of an interesting twist on Sword and Sorcery by making it the adventures of a, uh, a Native American in Europe in the Middle Ages. I thought that was a cool idea. Sometimes had good artwork. Um, And Gino, Paul, Ace Peter mentions that those horror comics I'm showing reprint the early Atlas pre-Marvel superhero age um, things, which is what I thought. And uh, he also says that DC never really got the sword and got the sword and sorcery right, in his opinion. Maybe with Warlord, yeah, Warlord worked for a while, I think, and then maybe I don't know, got repetitive or off the rails somehow. Did you re did you read Arak, Jean Paul? Um, I never read it all the way through. I remember liking like the first twelve or fifteen issues, and then I lost track of it. Now I have all the issues. I guess I can. If it's bad, then I'm stuck with like fifty bad issues of Arak. There's number forty three. Another one of his companions was this uh, satyr from Greek mythology. I'm not sure how they explained what he was doing in medieval Europe. I guess he was from Greece. And another Arak. So I think I've now completely filled out my Arak collection. These were the last issues I needed. <clears throat> and some more DC horror ghosts. Was someone saying there were Vertigo one-shots of ghosts? So I guess it was another DC horror anthology from the um, 70s. This one's a 40 center, so I assume it's 
later 70s. I'm not sure when in the 70s. So the Vertigo reprinted the Ghost series? Is what you're saying? They didn't reprint them. I think they took the title and did their own thing with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I didn't come across it. That one looks almost like Edgar Allan Poe on the cover, but I don't think it's supposed to be him. Oh, and I accidentally got two of these. I was buying comics so fast. I didn't pay attention. You were excited. <laughs> and here's an older one. I assume this is also reprints from the Atlas era. It's called um, Where Peature, Creatures Roam, but it's probably from 1970 or so. I love it when they have this box here. And now DC is kind of imitating that box where they put the title and the characters and stuff. <clears throat> Jean Paul says he remembers having some in the collection. I assume he's referring to Arak. Um, yeah, that looks like a a Ditko reprint there. Is it Ditko? Yeah, I think it's Ditko. Okay, now here's a, a Charlton. I wish I'd found more Charlton. These are all stuff I picked up at the convention um, called Thane of Dagarth. The Saga of Thane of Bagarth. Did you bring any? Talk about a bad any? title. The trade. Another. Trade. Sorry? Did you bring any books to trade? Mentioned, I think. I, sorry, you cut out for a second, so I couldn't hear. Did you bring any your books to trade to the convention? Uh, no, although my mycomicshop.com had a booth there where they were buying comics. But I didn't see anyone selling comics to them. They were just sitting there. I've never tried bringing my comics to a convention. This is pretty bad looking art. I'm not sure what this is. <clears throat> Maybe Thane of Bagarth is like a Viking or something. Anyway, when comics are 50 cents, I buy a lot. Finally, last but not least, I managed to score three Little Lotta comics. Lotta. I love Little Lotta. She is super powered. She is, well, not only super powered in eating, but she's actually super strong. I always find it funny that she's just this silly girl who has super strength. <laughs> Jean Paul Ace Peter said that Thane thing was late Charlton. Charlton didn't last much longer after that point. Let me see. The price was 75 cents. Yeah, so that is pretty late. That must have been early 80s, maybe even. Yeah, I have developed in my old age a huge love for Harvey Comics, particularly Little Lotta and Little Dot, who often appear in each other's comics. But Little Lotta can pick up a house if she wants to. She's very resourceful. Sorry? Very resourceful. <laughs> very strong. So Jean Paul had mentioned the comic 1984, and I picked up issue number one. I have one or two other issues of 1984. And I it was Warren Magazine's, in, as far as I know, Warren Magazine's attempt at being more like heavy metal and they thought well what does heavy metal do more than we do they have more sex in their comics so they added more sex there's the cover of the second issue with which is a corbin cover a naked woman strapped to a missile shot into space actually this cover is a corbin cover also but it's not a very clear one at least it looks like corbin style some kind of space battle I haven't, Undead Quinn mentions hot stuff from Harvey. I haven't tried that one out. It's about a little devil. A look at that. In the middle here is a Corbin story, Mutant World. Ooh. 
they got very nice color. Corbin did his own coloring back then. I think I read that he invented his own printing technique to get the presses to do the kind of color he wanted with like maybe extra extra printing plates or something. I feel like I've read Mutant World somewhere else. Some other company reprinted it. Oh, and here's some uh, Wally Wood. I think this is Wally Wood sex comics that they printed in here. Elves having sex or something. So, um, yeah, I don't think I'll get in trouble showing this, but I hear people worrying about that stuff. Very cool artwork. People just don't do comics like this anymore with that much work done on each panel. Mm -hmm. and this is weird. I've never seen that in a Warren comic where it reads this way, sideways. <clears throat> Okay, um, I think this is the last thing. I couldn't, this this was not in my um, CLZ app or anything. Um, it's called Milton Caniff, Rembrandt, Rembrandt of the Comic Strip. And um, Mil Milton Caniff did Steve Canyon and before that, Terry and the Pirates. And I think he's amongst, you know, comic historians, he's more famous for Terry and the Pirates. And I think he had a, oh, this is more of a reference book than a, a magazine. I thought it was a magazine. So maybe it's kind of a biography of Milton Caniff in magazine form. I think he had a big influence on the um, European artists. There's a specific European artist that's very popular who looks just like Milton Caniff. I'm trying to remember his name. Hugo, Hugo something. Maybe that's the dragon lady from Terry and the Pirates. I'm not sure. Well, look at that. This cover was actually like a dust jacket, but then the inside cover is completely blank. That's weird. Do you feel cheated? <laughs> do you feel cheated? The what? Do you feel cheated? Cheated? Yes. Do you feel cheated? Having no having no illustrations on your cover. Oh. No, I don't feel cheated. Oh. <laughs> it's just odd that it feels like a magazine, but it has a dust jacket. Mm -hmm from Flying Buttress Publications. So I was hoping it would have more reprints of Milton Caniff's artwork in it, but it still might be interesting to read about him. It looks like a lot of photographs from his life. So anything uh, anything new in your comic book life? You're, you're still appearing every week on the comic book round table. Have you started your reading for that yet? Uh, um, I usually start on the Saturday cause I, you know, I read pretty quickly. So, right. you know, and it's all digital. Yeah. And there's so no you don't have to go pick it up at the shop or anything. I mean, there's times where I, you know, I may, I may stop by the shop and read it at the shop physically. Uh -huh. you know, I get an opportunity, but you know, I don't see no reason to. And that's, and that's if I, if I feel compelled you know the power of if uh, the power of Christ compels me, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, like oh, I, I have to I have to fill this in my hands, and I have to go and pick this company. You know, the temptation. And when, if I remember correctly, you plan to get back when you get back to buying physical. You're going to go mostly trades and hardcovers and stuff. 
yes, I do plan on going back hardcovers because that's, you know, what I, what I started off with. So right. um, I'm going to go back to the Omnibuy and um, and trades because I, I just, you know, I, 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 li I do like singles and stuff, but um, I, I find that um, it's much more cost effective. And then I, I just... Right. I much more prefer the, heart, the format of collecting in tomes. I like, you know, I just. Well, you have them on your shelves. You can pull them off the shelf real easily rather than search through boxes and stuff. Yeah, it's much more aesthetically pleasing. Um, it just, it's much more cumbersome trying, trying to, um, yeah, trying to shelve comics, to be quite honest. It's just, you know, from not personally for me and where um, I'm at in my collecting. So. Um, I think I'm gonna start trying to sell off, like eventually, all the singles that I do have. Um, you know, maybe keep what's most valuable to me, and then sell off what I do. You know, not want. Have you tried selling? Have you tried selling any yet? No, but I'll probably do like a maybe some kind of sort of uh, giveaway and auction of some sort on the channel, maybe one of these days. Yeah, I with the ones I want to call a bunch, but I'm not sure it's worth trying to sell them. Maybe yeah, like, that's the thing with a lot of my a lot of the indie indie titles that I have. I know I know a lot of them are not going to be, you know, worth the gamble. But I might just you know set up a, a eBay thing or and sell what I can off or something like that, and you know, or and then what I can't sell, then I just you know give away to friends and do what I can. Uh, Gene Paul says he's buying essentials. Those are those black and white ones, I think, um, to get mass reading in. You can read like 20 issues in one essential, I think. <clears throat> I think those are, are those mostly Marvel? And then DC has the showcase versions, which are their black and white ones. So, well, it's, you got, well, Gene Paul Ace Peter is four hours ahead of me. You're three hours ahead of me. I'm sleepy here on the West Coast. <laughs> so I think I'm going to call it a night. Um, thanks so much to uh, to Sean, Jean Paul Ace Peter, to Undead Quinn. Um, we were joined by Wednesday Serial, at least for a little while. Um, and All About Comics was here for a while, or maybe still is. And the... Uh, the Masked Panther was here, but had to go to bed, so he's more sane. And um, and Tom, Thomas Churchill was here. I don't know if you're still here, Thomas. Um, all of those people, I think all of those people have channels. Um, so you should you should look them up. They all have great channels. Except I'm not sure about Undead Quinn. I, if he has a channel, I haven't discovered it yet, or if I don't recall the title. I've been on YouTube so long that I'm starting to forget who I subscribe to and who I don't. Let's see. Oops. Oh, well. Uh, I will look for his name later. So thanks a lot for joining me at the last minute, Ress. And um, I will probably be back with a non-live video about about more about the con I went to, about the panels and the people I talked to and stuff uh, sometime this weekend. Have a great night. Bye-bye.